All right, all right, all right. What is up, everybody? Um, welcome to my live training this week. I'm Ricky Carruth. Today I'm going to be calling for sale by owners. So I'm going to give it a second for everybody to log in and I'm going to get all set up here. So give me a second to get everything all set up. There we go. There we go. Let me know if you guys can hear me. Somebody uh, type in yes or thumbs up if you guys can hear me. Good, good. Okay, cool, cool. You guys can hear me. Great, great. All right, let me get all my stuff set up here. Good to have everybody. Okay, so here's the thing. I don't, uh, I'm not a for sale by owner guy, right? So this is going to be interesting, right? Um, I've called for sale by owners in the past. Um, I'm a circle prospecting guy, but I'm a guy that believes that everything works, everything. It doesn't matter what you do. The object of real estate is to talk to as many people as you can, asking them what you can do to help them. And then figure out who you connect with and who you don't and have a system in place to stay relevant with everyone that you connect with for the rest of their life. You want to be their agent forever. So the point is that most agents look at a prospect as a transaction today or not. And I look at a prospect as a possible lifelong relationship that is going to bring me 10 to 20 deals over the lifetime of my career, whether they buy or sell today or not. So my objective is to figure out how I can help them, how I can bring them value enough for them to view me as someone different than your just ordinary agent out there just trying to get a deal. Someone who actually is looking out for their best interest, who will do things that most realtors won't do to help them, right? Even if it doesn't mean getting a deal today. Okay. So, that's kind of where my mindset is. It doesn't matter who I'm calling for sale by owners, expire, circle prospecting, buyer leads. It doesn't matter. What can I do to help you? Right. And I'm going to evaluate every situation. Now, this is where a lot of you get mixed up is you chase everything. Right. And you don't spot opportunities as being inefficient or efficient. And so I'm really good at knowing what's efficient and what's not efficient. Um, and to me, for sale by owner, the for sale by owner game can be very efficient. Here's the problem with for sale by owners for me in my market. We scoured the internet. We scoured the internet and found 10, right? 10. For sale by owner.com, uh, fsbo.com, for sale by owner with a four, four for uh, for sale by owner.com. Um, we looked on all those places. Um, so I'm going to call all these 10 people. And then if you guys know of other sources, I can look and all that stuff. This is going to be a QA and a as well. So if you have any questions while I'm going through this, um, feel free to ask. And by the way, guys, I do this. I'm, I'm doing these training, these live trainings on YouTube every other Friday. So I'll do another one in two weeks, another one two weeks after that. And I'm going to be role playing live cold calling. I may do expires next time or buyer leads or sphere of influence or past clients. Um, I may just touch on, may just be a huge Q and A, whatever the case may be. I'm doing live training sessions every two weeks right here on this YouTube channel. And I'm doing everything for hundred percent free. So if you haven't already subscribed, do me a favor and click subscribe and help me reduce the failure rate in the real estate industry by spreading my message of relationships over transactions, so on and so forth. Right? Okay, I see Red X for sale by owners, Zillow. Um, let's see. Okay, so here's the thing. I just want to get on the phone with, you know, five to 10 people just to go through this for you guys as a training session. If I were to be a for sale by owner guy, yes, I would have Red X for sale by owners. I would be 
you know, dialing with the dialer, I would be going full blast. But one thing, like I was saying about my market is there's not a whole lot of for sale by owners. Even if you do go to Zillow and, and all this stuff, they're just going to trickle in. Right. And so it's not exciting because there's not an unlimited amount where sky's the limit and I can just go crazy. Um, Mark Walden says, fine for sale by owner signage you drive around. Yes, I am sure there's some for sale by owner signs around town that I could have, you know, that I could have, you know, found and all that stuff. But I didn't have time to do that. Right. I'm just doing this for you guys. I have 10 numbers. I'm going to call these numbers. I'm going to set some appointments. I'm going to find out everything. Now, what I believe is really a big thing for for sale by owners for me is I want to know why they're selling um, as opposed to just that they will sell or that they will use an agent. I want to know why. What's going on in their life that's making them make this decision to to buy or to, to sell? Um, and so I really want to know that. And then when I know that, that's where I kind of unlock the next little step for me to actually be able to help them. The next part is, is I want to figure out something I relate to on a personal level, you know, somehow that we relate and get along for some reason. All right, let's see. I'm going to call this first one. Let's see. We're going to go with for sale Uh, two seconds, two seconds. All right. Eight bedroom, eight bath, eight bedroom, eight and a half bath, right on the beach. It's got an infinity edge, heated swimming pool, private beach walkover. Da 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 da. Right? Super luxurious situation. All right. Victor wants to role play. Forwarded to an automated voice messaging system. Two zero five four two seven seven five eight zero is not available. At the tone, please record your message. When you've finished recording, you may hang up or press one for more options. Hey there, this is Ricky Caruth with Remax of Orange Beach. I was calling you about the house on West Beach. Give me a ring when you get a chance. 251-752-1138. Have a great day. All right. So no, no dice there. I really wanted to talk to that one. $2 million, eight bedroom, eight and a half bath. It looks like it's in new construction. Looks like they're in the middle of building it according to the pictures. All right. Let's jump to the next one, guys. If you guys have any questions, just type it in. Okay, here we go. This one's a four bedroom, four bath, 3,000 square foot on the lagoon for 840,000. Let me get all up on this one. Hey, uh, this is Ricky Caruth, Remax of Orange Beach. I was calling about the house. 
Yes, Ricky. What uh, what is the story there? Well, would you like the story? It's for sale. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Well, I didn't know exactly what you know what the what the situation was. If um, you know, like, um, are you guys living there? Is it? We live uh, there. Okay. Live, it's, it's our home. Yes, okay. Correct. Okay. What do you yeah. guys? Um, well, I guess would you guys work with an agent? Uh, we have a two percent commission for agents. Okay. Um, what do you guys do? I mean, where are you moving? Uh, we're planning on it when we sell the house. Yes. Okay. All right. Are y'all moving out of the area or staying local? We are. Okay. Yes, we, we are. All right. All right. Cool. Cool. Well, I tell you what. Um, I'd like to come see it sometime. Well, uh, we have we have uh, company in this week. Week uh, it would have to be next week. Okay. Cool. You, have you been online to look at it? I've yeah, I've checked it out online. Um, okay. Yeah. You know, it's a nice home, uh, and and we we've, we've been getting a lot of actually a lot of showings. Cool. Uh, cool. But uh, it's pretty unusual for this area. It's not a beach house. It's a home. It's got three quarters of an acre on the lagoon. Yeah. Uh, it's it's all custom, and uh, it's been well taken care of. What do you think? Why do you think it's still for sale with all the showings? Well, we've had a lot of we've had a lot of we've had five contracts on this house, but they've all had contingencies. Right. Uh, we gave one guy seventy days. He was going to close it. And he walked. I can tell you a lot of. And oh. I take any contingency contracts. Yeah. If they've got if they've got the cash and want to do it, fine. Other than that, it's you mean you mean contingency on a loan or contingency to sell another property? Most of it's contingency to sell other properties. One right. guy wanted to hold it so he could see if he could get his seaplane in here. I just go down the list. Oh no, no, you don't have to. Yeah. I know, I know all about it. I yeah. sell, I sell more property than anybody down here. Let me. Uh, right. What what day next week would be good to um to stop by and see you guys? Monday on. You just you name it. Well, our our uh, uh, guests will be gone on Sunday, so Monday. Tuesday, whatever. I'm going down to look at a condo on West Beach Monday morning about nine. What about what about ten or nine thirty or ten? That'll be if you can make it ten. That would be better because I, I have a little business I do early in the mornings, but that yeah. would be perfect. That'd be good. All right, good. All right, cool. And what's your name, sir? It's Paul. Last name is Cheek. C H E E K. All right, good. What I'll do is I'll just text you on this number when I'm headed your way. All right. And just let you know. And then I want to come see that house and meet you and see what I can do to help you. Well, we, we've had, a, uh, like I said, uh, which agency are you with? I'm with Remax of Orange Beach. Okay. We've had several agents from Remax of Orange Beach that looked at the house. Yeah. So, uh, well, you know, there here comes another one. Right. Well, <laughs> give us a text uh, on, on Monday morning and come by and take a look. Sounds good. Talk to you then, All Paul. Right. Bye. Thanks, man. What do you guys think about that? Let me know what you think. Um, you know, I mean, look, take getting appointments from for sale by owners is literally the easiest thing in real estate. The hard part is listing the for sale by owners. The call is not the hard part. The appointment's not the hard part. This is not, this is the easy part. The hard part is like building the relationship to the point of when they decide to list, you're the guy, right? So, you know, um, let's see what questions you guys have before I go to the next one. So when you get there, will you try for listing and different than other agents? No, I'm not going to try for the listing. I might try for the listing. It depends on the situation. Every situation is different. What I want to do is just spend some time with them to see if there's a connection and then I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask when I get there, is there another agent that you guys would consider if you were to list it? See, normally when I do the circle prospecting, I ask that question in the first phone call, right? But this is a little different situation. I want to ask that question when I get there, right? Because if I can't, because if I can't, uh, you know, 
let's put it like this. Since, you know, I may come off a little bit since they're trying to sell, it's a different situation. And if I start doing all that lingo where they feel like, oh no, is he trying to get us? Then they might back off. So you have to play the for sale by owners a little bit slower. You know, it's all real estate is all about figuring out when to apply the pressure and when it's not to apply the pressure, right? So, so that's that. What's up, guys? Let's see. Calm and relax. Kudos. What will you say different when you get there? I just explained it. I hope that helps. It all comes down to just having a conversation. Exactly. Okay, cool. Cool, 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 cool. All right, here we go. I'm going to call the next one. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. What is this one? What is this one? Here we go. Here we go. This one is on First Avenue. They're asking $4.99. I'm about to get all involved in this. All right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go now. Hello? What the hell? <laughs> oh my God. Dude, I do not know what that was, y'all. That is insane. Hello? Fuck you, man. Hey. This is insane. <laughs> Dude, hold on a second. Let me make sure I got the right phone number in this mug, dude. Holy smokes. Where are you at, phone number? Two one three three nine oh five. This is crazy, dude. All right, I'm calling this crazy person back one more time. Hey, this is hey, this is Ricky Caruth. I'm calling about a house. <laughs> dude, what the hell? All right. That's crazy, dude. No, 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 no. That was an actual person, guys. <laughs> All right. Third time's a charm on that. I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to go to the next one. What y'all say? All right. Let's see. <laughs> wow. All right. That dude was, that dude, that girl, whatever it was, they were mad. All right, let's see. Here we go. Walther, Walther. Okay, I don't know what this is. Let's see. This is a house in Gulf Shores for 180. Sorry for the language, guys. That was not me. <laughs> it's hilarious. All right. Hey, this is Ricky Carruth, Remix of Orange Beach, calling you about the house in Gulf Shores. Give me a shout, 251-752-1138. Thank you. Golly, dude, was that funny or what? <laughs> oh, my gosh, dude. All right. 
I'm just going through here, calling all these. See who this is. Yes. Let's see who this is. Cool. Let's see who this is. Hey, this is Ricky Carruth, Remax of Orange Beach, calling about the house in Foley. Yes, sir. What is the what is the story there? Is it still for sale? Oh yeah, yeah. What uh? uh it seems like that sucker are, uh, should have already sold. What is uh? What's going on? Uh, well, I can't answer that. I mean, we just I guess we've had it on the market for it's been on there a month, maybe. Oh, okay. It hadn't been on there that long. No, uh, we haven't, and it just, uh, I forget when we actually got on MLS, we, I mean, it's, yeah, it's, we got a, there's a couple of tinkering things we got, we got to do yet on it, but we've been, gosh, been busy with another project that we had to get emptied out, and we've got, like, I've got a couple of transitions to put, put from the wood board, the tile, and stuff like that, but yeah, it's good to go. So, uh, so it's a, it, so it's a brand new house, right? It's a brand new house. Yeah. Hey. Uh, it's gold fortified construction. Terry, Terry Jones is our general contractor that built it. I don't know if you know Terry or not, but this it's a it's a well built little house. Yeah, it's, uh, just it's right under two thousand square feet. Uh, we can do the gold fortified stuff on it. In fact, it's one of the best gold fortified inspector city seen. Yeah, uh, it's uh, we we did. You know, of course, we build it as a spec house, but it's really a, a spec house plus. It's right. Got spray foam, it's got spray foam insulation in the attic. Uh, it's very energy efficient. It's got the impact resistant windows, so you don't have to worry about you know storing shutters and putting plywood shutters up for hurricane season. Yeah. Uh, got gas. It's the only house in there that has the gas appliances, and it's got a gas tank with hot water heater. Two fireplace, gas fireplace, four bedroom, two and a half baths, big master bath, soaking tub, and a big stand up shower. It's it's a good spot. I mean, if you guys if you guys want to look, we can sure make arrangements to get you in there and look. I got you, man. So, are you like, are you the builder? I mean, I know Terry built it for you, but you built it. I'm the finance. I'm the finance guy. I'm technically the owner. And and Terry's the general contractor. Okay, so okay. Have a on and then you're for sale by owner, but it's on MLS. I'm just wondering, yeah. you guys just don't don't care to deal with an agent to handle all you. Evidently, you do a lot of stuff. No, this is the first one, and we're trying it. Okay. Well, let me Honestly, ask. What's that? We're just, you know, we're just kind of experimenting with it. Yeah. If we can. We can get it sold there. You know, there's a two percent seller fee. Yeah, um, yeah. We can we can arrange that for you know the guy that gets it sold. Um, yeah. But you know that that's pretty good. Um, that was not. Trying to I'm trying to think uh, some other things we did. Oh, it's got it's got real high high found a full half inch engineered hardwood with with uh. A, over a mill veneer on the hardwood, so you could easily refinish the floor if you ever had to. Yeah, it's got enough that you could sand it and refinish it. We did. We did hardwood from the front door, uh, back in the hallway, uh, the kitchen, the whole great room, living area, back to the next hall, and into the master bedroom. So it's got it's got hardwood in like the prime areas. The other uh, other three bedrooms are carpet. Uh, tile in the laundry room, got a big laundry room. Tile in there, the laundry room in the baths. Are you are you local here in the Foley? Yeah, I live in Gulf, I live in Gulf Shore. Okay, okay, cool, cool. Let me ask you this, man. Um, if you start doing this, I'm sure you're going to need a real estate agent. Is there a real estate agent that you would already work with that you have a relationship with already? Yeah, I do. Um, I mean, we're 
you know, we talked to Terry, and I mean, Terry's got other projects he's doing too. Yeah. Uh, he's, uh, of course, most of those are, are custom. I think they're they're kind of pre-sold things. Mm. Uh, but again, we were just we're we're just flying out here, and we started this last last winter, and it took a little longer to get some things wrapped up because I mean, the, as you know, I don't need to tell you the building market's busy and it's hard to get subs back in and get some stuff done at times. And, and we we just didn't want anybody doing the work. We had some guys that we would, were willing to wait on to get some things done. Because like I, like I say, we, we built a high quality house. And, um, every door and window has a full 2 by 12 header on it. Mm. And all the strapping that goes with it. I mean, I, I was laughing. We has got so much strapping. We spent I think it was almost five thousand dollars just in metal straps. Yeah. To tie the to tie the tie the studs together and, and hit all that, you know, gold fortified plus standard. So it's it is a tight, well built little house. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. It sounds like it, man. Well look, I um you know, I sell I'll tell you, I sell more real estate than anybody down here. And I'm looking for people that I can create a relationship with, you know, that we that I can help you accomplish what yeah. you're, you're wanting to do. It sounds like you have a relationship with another agent. Um, Terry may or may not, you know, but I would like the opportunity to work with you guys in some form or fashion. Yeah, well, we well, I mean, we get uh, we certainly you know we'll keep our keep it open and take a take a peek. But I've done a, I've done a lot of business. Uh, Moving and selling and buying and, and things with the Angelina Needham with the Bellator. Yeah. And she's act, you know, kind of a family friend. I don't know if you know Angelina or not, but she's, she's as much a friend as she is a realtor. She, yeah. You know, she, act, she actually counseled us through this bill just out of the goodness of her heart, you know, because I was wanting to get things that, that, uh, that would appeal to a buyer. And, you know, who better to ask than, than a realtor like yourself? Mm -hmm. So, you know, Angelina reviewed the plans with us and, and you know, just over a cup of coffee type of thing. So she's, she's a special lady to us, but I mean, it's, it's business too, so we'll just have to see how everything works. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Well, all right, man, I'll tell you what, maybe um, maybe I can catch lunch with you guys sometime in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, I, yeah, I'd love to. I'm, uh, I'm finishing up. I, had, I bought a house here go in uh, Albus Plantation Hills and had my mom in there, but my, my mom passed away last year and I'm just now getting motivated enough to go in and clean the house out. I, I'm getting it, uh, getting it sold in a week or so and I've been up there like for two weeks. <laughs> yeah. that project. I'm, I'm actually retired. I think my wife, I need to get back to the beach and listen to that retirement life. <laughs> well, look, hey, what, what, what's your name, man? Uh, Glenn, Glenn, G L E N N, uh, Fortune, W H A R T O N. We live out here at Sailboat Bay. Oh, great. Great, great. Well, look, I'll tell yeah. you what, man. Let me, I'll call you next week and maybe set a lunch, lunch appointment up with me, you, and Terry or something. And, um, you know, just hang out for a second and see if there's a fit where we can help each other. And, you know, I sell a bunch yeah. of stuff down here and, to me, it doesn't matter if you use me or not. I just, you know, the opportunity to maybe help each other, you know, might be there. So you never know. Yeah. I, I tell you what, uh, I, I really enjoyed this process. You, you never know who you're going to meet and, and how they're going to help you. Or, you know, of course, you know, Angelina was looking for a tile setter. One of her clients needs a tile setter. Well, we've done a lot of work with a, a sub, uh, Samuel Jasso paint sheet rocks and trim. He does a whole bunch of stuff. Well, you know, he, he was able to help Angelina. You know, just somebody I somebody I knew and trusted. So and, and that's what this business is all about. I think it's kind of kind of relationships and, and trying to help people get things done. We we actually my, my son is the primary, but we have a decorative concrete finishing business. We do he does, he's the installer. We do decorative overlays on concrete and pool deck, patios driveways, yeah. interior extra floors. You know, so we're all over the place. It yeah. really works at Mobile, but you know, just almost as much 
Baldwin County, but mm-hmm. just the people were meeting through that and, you know, just hearing people in other directions, other, cool. other contractors and subject to provide different services that we can't do. So it's, it's cool. I've enjoyed it. Cool, man. Well, look, I'm going to give you a shout next week and we'll see if we can't put something together. Okay, yeah. I'm, I'm right here. We'll go through the house first. I'd love to show you the house. Absolutely, man. Yeah, I'll call you next week and we'll maybe we'll meet up there. Okay, yeah, that's good. Yeah, then we'll yeah. grab a bird and a beer or something and think good thoughts. Sounds good, Glenn. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, good luck. Later, buddy. No yep. Woo! That was a stage five <laughs> for sale by owner. Oh, man. All right, cool. So I'm moving right on, guys. I don't know what to say about that one. So that was a builder who was building a new house. He has a builder that built it. He's the finance guy and actually the owner. So I just went in for the kill. Do you have an agent? Um, and if they're going to build a bunch of stuff, let's try to line up a relationship where I can represent them on all their development stuff. So that's where that's going. I'm going to call him Monday, set up a lunch appointment with him and his builder, look at the house, eat lunch with them, and just try to make an impression and see where it goes. That's all you can do. All right, cool. Let's move right along here. Please ask questions if you have any, guys. And also, look. Follow me on Instagram. Turn post notifications on for inspirational stuff. My Instagram content is really on another level and getting better and better and better. So I'd appreciate it if you guys are following me, turning post notifications on there. It'd mean a lot to me. Comment when you see something good. And, you know, also here on YouTube, let me know. Comment, thumbs up, thumbs down, and let me know if I'm helping you. And I'm getting tons of DMs on Instagram, 10 to 20 a day. I'm answering every single one of them with questions, really detailed questions. So um, just want to throw that out there. I'm giving a lot of help on Instagram. Okay, let's see what we got here. Here's one. Okay, uh Let's call this one boop, boop, boop. Hello? Hey, this is Ricky Carruth, Remax of Orange Beach. I'm calling about that house in Foley. Yes, how can I help you? Is it still there? Still for sale? It- it sure is, yes, sir. What is the story there? Is it why isn't it not sold? It looks like a good house at a good price. Well, I think the prices are a problem. We have it listed for sale by owner. We put it on MLS. We're actually on vacation right now, and um, we're um, we'll be headed back there to Alabama on Sunday, and uh, we're gonna drop the price a little bit and go from there. Have you had any luck? Uh, well, we have one offer. It was awfully low, and um, we have uh, people in and out of there all the time looking at it. Um, mm. So I don't know if you call that luck. It's obviously still for sale. It sounds like you've had some good luck if you've had a lot of people looking at it and an offer. Yeah, but it's still for sale. <laughs> yeah, true, true, true. Okay, well, um, I guess... My next thing would be for me to go see it. Are you guys, what's your deal with working with agents? Uh, Russell. She's with our listing agent if we went with an agent. Um, so we worked with you in the past. You um, listed a condo and we uh, bought it from you it was, um, at the plantation 5601. It happened a few months ago. You're the buyer of one of my listings? on the beach and you have a house for sale by owner of Foley and I just called you? That's what happened. Holy smokes. <laughs> the, this, why does this stuff happen to me all the time? Okay. <laughs> cool, cool. Well, how's the condo? Oh, we love it. We love it. Yeah, it's, um, we have quite a few of them. So, um, yeah. Yeah, we, we absolutely love it. Okay. Well, yeah, so. with all that being said, I'm glad that all this has worked out and the stars lined up and I got to say hey to you today 
And if there's anything I can do for you, just let me know. I certainly will. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. So that was wild, huh, guys? Um, so I want to I want to make a note right here before we go any further that a lot of you guys are saying stuff about MLS and, and see in my area, there is there are these companies that are on MLS. They're on MLS as they have a real estate license. They're on MLS and they they go after for sale by owners and they let the for sale by owner put it on MLS under their name. But then in the agent remarks is to call the owner, right? So for sale by owners are on our MLS. It's a really messed up system. Complete. Like it's absolutely insane. They should, they should have to be barred that they can't put owners phone numbers in MLS or something like that. It's, it's absolutely insane. I can't believe that the board is letting them do that. If anybody's watching this, that's on the board, take this as I think that that's messed up, but it is what it is. It's not going to stop progress. Mary Kay Marino says, why wouldn't I push to list the home? Why would I try to, they have an agent that they've done multiple deals with one in which was a condo I had listed. And that's their, they're not going to use another agent. It's kind of like my clients. They're not going to use anybody else, right? So there's no need in beating a dead horse or trying to sell the unsellable. It's time to move on, right? You have to know when to cut your losses and quit trying to push so hard. It's all about like the fact that it's unlimited. You can't do it all. So why try so hard on this one thing when in that same period of time, you could have talked to five more people and maybe had two or three more opportunities. It's mindset. Okay, y'all, y'all are like this. This is a negotiation going on. Hey, Kathy. Hey, Ricky. How are you? Doing good. How about you? Good. Um, well, I've talked to Gerald. He's just gotten back from uh, wherever he's been, and. We'd really like 320, but yeah. if you think that's going, I mean, yeah, I don't want to lose the deal for five thousand dollars. <laughs> right, right, right. Well, yeah, so. to be honest with you, I tried to call the agent just to talk to him, just between me and him, about 320 right. to see if we could squeeze yeah. him up. So let me just yeah. try to uh, let me just try as hard as I can to get us to 320. And then, yeah. you know, if we can't, we can't, I'll tell, you know, we'll, yeah. we'll do the 315, but I'm going to do everything I can to play our cards right to get 320. And I'll just try right. as hard as I can. And if I can't, you know, that if they're going to walk away, then we don't want to, we don't want them to walk away. Right. Yeah. No, we don't. I, I mean, you know, um, and I don't, I don't know about closing costs and all that or what the closing know, what costs. The what the closing? Yeah, what the other stuff's gonna be? Yeah, um, yeah. Sure. I'll tell you what it is. You're gonna get about two ninety five ish, two ninety four five. Okay, and that's with you and the closing cost. Everything, right? prorated taxes, title insurance, deed oh. preparation, all the whole nine yards. Okay, so you said two ninety five. How much? Two ninety four to two ninety five, somewhere in there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 All right. Do what you can. Okay. Uh, be more money for you and more yeah. money for me. Oh yeah, I'm definitely gonna try. Trust me, I'm gonna give it everything I got. So I'll let you know something okay. here in a little while. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Bye. Bye. Done deal right there. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Where was our guys? Flat fee, yeah, flat fee. Let's see, therefore you cannot, let's see, if it's on MLS, yes, listed with the discount agency, therefore you cannot solicit them for a listing. Yeah, that's true, but what are they gonna do, man? Are they gonna come after me? You know, what are they gonna do, come after me? I'm calling a for sale by owner that's on a for sale by owner site. So, you know, what are they gonna do? Yes, praise the Lord. Another deal. I'm trying to get two pending deals a week right now. Four listings and two pendings a week is what I'm at. And I'm, I've gotten four listings a week for maybe six or seven weeks. Two pendings a week for four weeks in a row now. Um, 
our transactions were off. So I kind of fell off myself because I was spending a lot of time coaching. I got back to focusing on real estate, a goal of two pennies a week. And I've hit that for four weeks in a row now. That was my second one this week. So I'm just uh, super excited. Plus, I'm going to be in Fort Lauderdale August 10th doing a talk. So if any of you guys are in Fort Lauderdale, Miami area, come see me August 10th. I'll be in Fort Lauderdale. All right, let's see here. Okay, that's a no-go. Here we go. Let's see what we got. All right, here we go. It's a little one-bedroom condo on the lagoon. Let's get all up in it. And by the way, guys, this is going to be my last call for the day. And then I'm going to take some questions. So if you have any questions, go ahead and type them in now. Hey, it's Ricky Carew, three minutes of Orange Beach, calling about the condo for sale down West Beach. Give me a ring when you get a chance, 251-752-1138. Thank you. All right, let's see. Okay, I'm going to answer a few questions and kind of see where that goes. Maybe I might make another call since that person didn't answer. Or maybe one of the calls I left a message for will call back, so that'll be good if that happens. Holly asked me, how much information do I have before I call? How do you handle the know-it-all seller? Okay, so how much information I have when I call is very little. I normally just have the address, phone number. I normally don't even have a name. Some of these websites have names. Some of them don't. If you write, if you if you see the sign, you know, sometimes they don't have a name. So um, very little, right? Um, sometimes you know what they're asking. Sometimes you don't. Um, basically just the address and the phone number is all I need. I'm going to call and kind of ask them what's going on, how long it's been for sale, why are they selling, what's the price, tell me about it, when can I see it, do you have an agent, da 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 But like that first guy, I'm going to go see him next week, and, and I didn't ask him if he had another agent. You know, you have to fill out these situations. Real estate is all about reading people and knowing when to apply the questions and apply the pressure. Um, that's, that's the, that's the whole game. So really, and the only way to learn that game is through experience of going through what I'm doing right here, going to meeting people, making calls, doing deals, screwing up a bunch and learning what works and what doesn't work and learning people, learning people, how to read people, what their motives are, how they react to certain things, you know, I mean, there's only a handful of different scenarios, right? And when you learn how to handle those, you're good. But the biggest thing is that business is unlimited and you don't have to get stuck on one person trying to figure out how to convert everybody. Lead conversion is a myth. Lead generation is the key to everything. Let's see. Victor says that was a realtor. Oh, okay. I didn't even notice. Was Did it say that on the voicemail? Yeah, that's Oh, good. EXP. I'm going to recruit her. Team Ricky. All right, let's see. Do let's see. Okay, and how do I handle the know-it-all seller? I kind of just let them think they know it all, right? That's how you handle people. You let them kind of lead the show. When in the back of your mind, you know what's going on, right? And then you ask the questions you know you need to ask at the certain pivotal points that's going to turn everything around in your favor, right? So just let them be know-it-alls. Right. But at the end of the day, what's going to happen? They're either not going to be able to sell the property because they're 
price too high or they can't handle all the pressure or they can't handle all the showings or, you know, whatever. They either can't sell it for any, for some kind of reason and they, then they switch to, okay, I want a realtor to handle it or they don't. Right. And so you're either going to be the one that they relate to and connect with, or you're not. And you got to put yourself in that position and be ready when they make that decision. Let's see. Do I ever wholesale a property or purchase it yourself instead of listing it? No, I never do that, Michael. Um, I buy how I buy houses and stuff that are good deals. Um, courthouse steps is where I like to do it. Um, I'm in the middle of like seven flips right now. Um, so very rarely will I buy a piece of property off somebody I'm trying to do a real estate business with. Very, very rarely. I don't think I've ever even done that. I've definitely sold it to investors that flipped the property, but I was I wasn't ever involved in the actual flip. Brigida, I'm gonna post. Um, everybody should be on my email email list, getting my emails. So I'll be posting it there. I'll post it in the group of where I'm gonna be in Fort Lauderdale, Fort Lauderdale, uh, August 10th, doing a doing a talk there at an event. So I'll be posting all that. Where do you go to meet him when you take a listing package with him, with you? Hey, Moritz, what do you mean? Where do I go to meet him when I take a listing package with me? What? Please clarify the question for me. Lane Hunter says, hi, Ricky, question for you. This isn't for, for sale by owner, but for circle prospecting. When you call a number and someone picks up and it's the wrong number, what do you say to get the email? I say the same thing. I say, okay, I'm sorry, but look, are you the owner of the house? Okay, well, look, there's a house that sold right around the corner, and I was just calling to see if there's anything I could do for you. Right. Okay. I got you. Well, look, is there an agent you would work with? Okay. I got you. Well, look, I'm sure at some point you would, you're going to buy or sell. I'd like the opportunity to work with you. Is it okay if I stayed in touch? What's your email? Same thing. Same exact thing. Just go with the flow and learn how to read people. Reading people is the key. There's no secret equation or something that's just going to magically make everything just happen. It, you, you have to learn how to read people and go with the flow and learn how to pick your spots to apply pressure, right? When the opportunity pops up, that's the key. Uh, let's see. What do I say once I get in the door on a for sale by owner appointment? I'm going to literally try to connect with them. Everybody, it's not the same thing every time. I'm filling out the situation. I'm gonna read this person and see if there's a connection. And I'm going to try to establish, are we in a working relationship here as far as client realtor? You know, could I possibly be your guy or girl in your case? Could I possibly be your guy or girl to be that one, to be that realtor for you? Do you see it in me? Right. So I'm just going to ask, is there a realtor you work with? Look, you know, I want to work with you long term. What are your goals? What are you, where are you going from here? Are you going to buy something? What? What, how can I help you? Right. And always make it about them. And if they see the value, most people will see the value in you as someone who wants to help. Right. If, if you come at them as you want to help and you're a hard worker and you're dependable, most people are going to love that. And you're going to win most people over that way. Let's see. Casey says helping is the new black. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty tight. By the way, guys, big shout out to Blake Buchanan for uh, creating all the Instagram pictures. Um, he creates most of those Instagram pictures that are just so good. I can't find anyone else that makes them as good as him. I can't even find an Instagram profile that makes them. I don't know, man. Dude's he's a beast. He's got it going on. Roger says, calling open house, should I follow the cold calling script, but after the weather, add in the open house info to the transition into didn't know if there's any. Yes, absolutely. I would, for an open house, calling around an open house, I would say, hey, is this so-and-so cool? Look, this is Ricky Ramek, Turns Beach. How you doing? Okay. How's the weather? Enjoying the days and a gorgeous, da-da-da. Look, 
I'm doing an open house right down the road and I didn't know if you might want to stop by, if there's anything else in the world I could do for you and just start the conversation and see where it goes, see if there's a connection. But I would actually say both. I would say, Hey, I didn't want to take up too much of your time today, but I'm doing an open house tomorrow right down the road from you. And I didn't know if you might want to stop by and see the house or if there's anything else in the world I could do for you. So use that line. Nick, 19 year old and just rented my first apartment in New York city. Congrats, brother. How do you sell people on walk up apartments with no laundry in the building when they can go elsewhere for the same money? I would say get, I would say sell them what they want. Don't try to sell them something that they don't want. If they want to, you know, uh, if they want to go somewhere else for the same money, then let them go somewhere else for the same money. Take them down there, sell them what they want down the road that is something that they want. Don't try to sell them something that they don't want. Even if you think it's best for them, it's actually their decision of what's best for them, not you. So don't try to sway anyone of this or that. Find out what they want and then give it to them. I hope that helps, man. Thank you for the question. Okay. I hope I'm saying your name right, man. Marantz. Sorry, when you go to meet that one for sale by owner guy, will you be taking a listing package and doing a listing presentation? I don't do listing presentations. Okay. If any of you guys are following me on my website, zero to diamond.com and you're part and you're in the coaching program, there's a, there's a past coaching call called when the listing agree, uh, uh, listing appointment where it's just an audio. You can listen while you're driving. And I literally talk about what I do at listing appointments. I show up with blank listing agreement, comps, uh, a gift card to a restaurant, business card, a Ricky Kruth pin and a nice folder. And I'm going to give it all to them when we leave. But I'm there to connect with them. I'm there to make a connection, a relationship. I don't care about all the tricks and bells and whistles all these other realtors are using in their listing presentations. They're not selling as much property as I am. I would put myself as a single agent against any single agent in the galaxy, right? Um, so I'm not worried about, I don't do listing presentations. I do, what can I do to help you? And I'm going to do that for, I'm going to make that happen for you. If you feel like we have a connection and you want me, you want me to do it for you. If not, you know, we'll shake hands. It, it was nice to meet you, you know, good luck with everything. If, if you, if you, if there's anything I can ever do for you in the future, call me, you know, have a good day. So that's, what's up with that. When you get the email address for circle prospecting, do you send them a welcome type email short after, or do you just put them on a weekly email? Um, I do both. I love to send a quick email, say, thanks for your time on the phone. I send a link to all the comps or whatever and say, here's all the comps, you know, let me know if I can help you. I'm here. You'll start getting an email from me every week. I'll talk to you soon. I do like to do that. Um, so, but I don't, I don't do it every time because you know, I'm busy. So sometimes they just get thrown into my weekly email thing. I'm just being honest with you guys. Sometimes they just get thrown in there and then sometimes I do, but if it were a perfect world, I would do it every time and type out, thank you for your time on the phone, really short email with some value, some market info and move on. Okay. Larry says, what, what do I say when they say, bring me a buyer? Well, there's a lots of things you can say, you know, um, but here's the thing, um, Larry, at what point are they going to decide that they're tired of trying to sell it on their own, right? At what point are they going to decide they're tired? I believe the stats are 87% of for sale by owners end up listing it with an agent. So at what point are they going to get tired and have you established a good enough connection with them and made it clear that you want to be the realtor? Um, and, and when the time comes that they decide they might want to list, that's what it boils down to. Okay. I'll bring you a buyer if I get one, you know, in the meantime, let's do lunch or, you know, let me help you find what you're trying to buy once you sell or, you know, bring them some kind of value, you know, continue 
checking on them. The thing with for sale by owners that I like to do is, is I, I like to call every week and say, hey, what's going on? How's, how's it going? You had any showings? What's the feedback? Have you got an offer? Because when they sell it, they're probably going to turn around and buy something. They can buy it from you for no charge. You may have a buyer in the works, right? Even if they sell it theirself. If you establish that they didn't already have another agent or and you establish why they're trying to sell and all that stuff. So there's a lot of opportunity there, but I wouldn't even sweat bring me a buyer. I'm trying to figure out if I connect with this person long term and you know, I'm waiting for that opportunity where they decide that they're tired of trying to sell it on their own. For sell by owner game is really tough, guys. It takes a lot of guts, it takes a lot of persistence, it takes a lot of follow up, a lot of follow up. That's why it's hard for me to do it because you spend so much time on one client. Whereas I like to do the circle prospecting where I call them once, get their email, put them on an email list. They call me five years later, want to do something and then run into all kinds of people that do want to do things right now as well. So for me, circle prospecting is way more effective because you don't have to follow up as much. They end up calling you when they get ready and um, you run into business now. But I think as a new agent, you should do everything. Do it all for sale by owners, expire, circle prospecting, buyer leads. You need deals. So try everything and get follow up on everything and go as hard as you can. Get deals going. Do three open houses a day, uh, a week. Follow up with people while you're at the open house. Go crazy. Let's see. Ricky, do you pre-qualify sellers at all on price, motivation, etc. before going on the appointment? If you notice, Matt, um, if you noticed, I actually asked all those people, I believe, why they're selling. I found out more about what, why they were selling and what was going on in their life. And so, um, yeah, you know, and I take that and I say, I, you know, I, I store it in my, in my mind, you know, and I kind of take that all in consideration with the entire situation of, and, and, and really I, I kind of find out their motivation based on their price point and the market and whatever they told me the reason for them wanting to, to sell was and what their plans were moving forward. So I do, um, I, but I don't do the standard, every other real, the, the standard questions that realtors do. It's more of a personal thing for me. I want to sound personal. I want to sound like a friend or a family. I want to sound different. So thanks for the question there, Kylie. Wish I could stay and watch, but I got to do an open house. Catch it again later. Have a nice day. You too. Eric Cunningham. What's up, Eric Cunningham? Eric Cunningham, you called me. I called you back. You called me again, and we haven't been able to touch base. So definitely call me um, this weekend, maybe. Try to hit me up. I'll be glad to uh, chat with you about whatever we, whatever you wanted to talk to me about. But with our my weekly email, are you using Top Producer for the numbers? Or are you using a generalized area stat? Oh, like like for the stats that I put on there, I just use MLS and I just kind of look it up myself. I'll look up close, you know, so far this year compared to last year or new listings, close sales, or I just kind of search my MLS. And then there's a, the um, a University of Alabama. They, do a, they have a, a, a real estate research center. And they send us out reports on condos that are really nice. So I use that whenever they send those. So, but MLS is my main source. Lane, could you ever do a video about how do you, okay, guys, look, this is for everybody watching. Lane, listen to me. Go to zero to diamond.com, log in, it's free. Go to Member Central. There's a link that says weekly email. Go there. There's an example of a weekly email and a video tutorial on how I do the weekly email, how I build it in, in constant contacts. So go there and um, and take advantage of that and just let me know if you have any questions. OK, it's all there for you. Yes, there's an email. There's a there's a video there uh, on the weekly email link. Lane, you got the questions today. Uh, your circle prospecting scripts are gold. I talked to about 10 people for every 100 calls and get about three emails. Thanks for everything you do. Really appreciate it. I That right there, see, I get about 20 of these a day on Instagram. People thanking me. They're using the scripts. It's working for them. They're creating relationships and things are happening. Big things are happening. All my dreams are coming true for you guys to take what I have bottled up in my mind forever 
and using it to succeed. This is like a dream come true for me. So thank you guys for trying, you know, like taking what I'm doing and trying it in your own markets with your own stuff and applying it and finding success and being consistent. So big thank you to all you guys. Okay. Matt says, does most of your business come from people calling? Um, just so many referrals, past clients. Um, you know, it was just ridiculous, right? So, so yes, most of my stuff is because I put the work in. I'm where you want to be, right? And the difference between where I'm at and where you're at is because I put the work in for 15 hours a day for 15 years. And that's the bottom line. Let's see. Word. I get the emails. Didn't know you had a video there. Yep. 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 There's a video there, Lane. Oh, Lane. No, no problem, man. You like, like you guys hit me up with questions all the time and I appreciate all the questions and I love answering them. So just keep, keep it up. Just keep pushing. Let's see. Michael says, do you track who opens your emails and do you follow up with people that don't open your email with a call or postcard. No, I don't. I don't have time to worry about that. I'm too busy trying to build the database bigger um, or just close deals or put stuff under contract or get listings or go to appointments. Um, but Michael, it's a good idea. Like do it, like do what you're saying, follow up with those people, see what's up, see what you can do to help them make contact. Um, you know, Keep keep going and do do what you do. Cool. So that's it for the questions. I'm going to give it about two more minutes to see if anybody pops up with another question. I just want to thank you guys so much for tuning in and watching me call a few for sale by owners and getting a feel for how I handle certain situations there. Had one crazy person. That was pretty funny. So if you didn't catch that, go back and watch. And, but I did, I think, make two really strong contacts. I'll go see the guy Monday with the house, and then I'll go have lunch with that builder at some point in the next couple of weeks, and I look forward to seeing where those relationships go. I will keep you guys informed. Let's see. Uh, okay. I'll see you tomorrow. I mean, tomorrow. Monday, Tuesday. I guess. Tuesday? Huh? says so she'll see me Tuesday. I don't think so. All right. What did your progression look like from the beginning? I made, I hit, um, it took me eight months to make my first sale. After that, I did two deals a month for about a year. And then I bumped it up to, I don't know, maybe doing three or four a month for a little while. And then I kind of went like that until the market crashed. Then the market crashed. I sold my last condo in 05, February of 05. I sold my last condo. I didn't sell anything between 05 and 08. I came back in 08. Um, I think I sold maybe 15 units in 08, 09. I sold maybe 20 units, 20 or 20 or 30 units. 2010, I sold about 20 or 30 units. And then 2011, probably 40 units. 12 was about 50, 60, 13 was about 80, I think. And then 14 is when I hit 100. So I did 100 a, 100 a year since 2014. This will be the fifth year in a row of 100 deals per year, single agent. So I'm over 70 deals right now, pending and closed. I'm super excited about the rest of the year. I'm on track to hit a million a year, uh, a million this year again. And so I'm just really just trying to uh, enjoy it. Like I'm like what I'm so motivated and I'm not burnt out at all, even though I'm coaching so much and selling at the same time, because I'm just so happy. And like you got you guys sending me messages about how I'm helping you is what's is the fuel that's keeping me going. And so I just want to really, really like like, you know, completely no bullshit completely thank you guys um from the bottom of my heart it's really keeping me going with this thing and and i'm really enjoying the youtube and the instagram ride that i'm on and uh anyway 
I guess that's it. Um, thanks for tuning in. Um, we'll do another training session in two weeks from today. Let me know what you want it to be on. Send me an email or a text or uh, post in the group what you want it to be on. I might do role playing. Um, I might call expireds. Um, you know, I don't know what we'll do, but it's going to be fun. I know that. So um, I'll be in Fort Lauderdale August 10th. Be sure to to be there for anywhere in the area. I'll let you guys know as I book more speeches around the country. I look forward to meeting each and every one of you. And um, thank you for helping me spread my message and share my story um, and everything else. If you guys get a wild hair, send an email out to your entire office, you know, about me and, and say something about how much I've helped you and that um, they should follow me on wherever you know, and just help me spread my message, you know, as much as possible. Um, my goal is just to really be the face of inspiration in the real estate world. Um, and it's all completely free. So let's see. There's Abbas. What's up, Abbas? Off topic, Facebook marketing. Do you toggle Instagram? as part of the ad. Yep. Absolutely. Boom. So anyway, yeah, I did kind of ramble there. Thanks Abbas for pointing that out. Abbas is such a nice guy, by the way. But anyway, we'll talk to you guys soon. Like I said, hit me up if you need something and uh, you guys have a good weekend.